Hey gang, I'm back. This time not pumped up on Red Bull. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, a few things have gone on in the last, I guess it's been three weeks since I streamed. Um, most importantly, uh, well, I guess for those who follow on Discord, <laughs> this is, this is kind of weird. None of this has moved. It's all just sitting here exactly where it was three weeks ago. Well, when I said, when I sent those pictures to Discord. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I put my back out and I wasn't able to do anything at all, um, including move all this stuff. So I dusted it off. Well, I, I guess I didn't do a very good job of dusting it off uh, this morning and I'm ready to go and get to working on it. Um, so uh, the, the idea here is we're going to, we're moving off the, the base software for the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder and I'm switching to a version of the software called Happy Hair um, in hopes of solving the the inconsistencies yeah i i think that's the best way to put it that's that's really you know the device is somewhat it's a working device we know that people have printed things with it i've printed a thing with it um but you know it doesn't get anywhere close to i don't know if i can do this can i do this without Doxing myself, yeah. Okay, it doesn't get anywhere close to the the uh, reliability of this unit, and, and and I'm gonna say this unit, the MMU MMU two, is reliable to a point. Um, it's how can I explain it? It it nails PLA. It nails PLA. Um, it, it's done okay on a very simple uh, ABS print. Um, the other, the, the big print I tried to do was was ASA, and ASA seems to be like different than ABS in its gooiness, in the way it, because it just pulled strings and and left strings of ASA in the in the. Bowden tube. So that's what was happening with that. This, this is just PLA. We, we, I won't be printing anything else on this. It's not enclosed. I don't plan on enclosing it. Um, your nine color ABS prints is just kind of a why type. Why would you do that? Um, where, whereas a nine color PLA print, you know, again, PLA, I use PLA to print toys. I don't really print anything but toys with PLA. So yeah, I'm not gonna worry about uh, ASA or ABS or any of that stuff. I'm just trying to worry about getting nine rolls of filament to load and unload properly here. Um, right now, you'll notice I have my little gadget here. And the first thing we're gonna do is remove that. We don't want any any variables in this up or upgrade uh, in this shift to the new version, a different version of the software, to uh, be affected by my little the, the little gadget I built. Um, this thing works great for the MMU2 because the MMU2 doesn't have a lot of variability in the uh, in the way how can I explain this in the way that it loads each filament they're all the same they're all treated as the same thing which of course makes it simple um, this is <laughs> yeah this this is not simple um, even with the happy hair software I don't think it's going to be simple, but we're going to give it a shot. We're going to see what happens. We're going to try um, and uh, we'll see how far we get before we give up. 
Um, I mean, how long it takes us to get it all working. Um, now, right now, I've I've got up to six, zero through six, on the, on the ERCF loading filament most of the time. Like, there's a problem with bounce back on the on the servo, and you know. We'll see that in this software, they talk about that and 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 they try to do things like, like the same thing I did. I actually did try to make a change to the software so the servo stayed locked a little longer before it unpowered. Um, but I thought I burnt out a servo doing that. But that doesn't make sense because the steering servo is going constantly in a in a an RC vehicle. So I don't know. We'll see. So in order to do this. I've set up something here a little bit different. Can you hear me now? Oh yeah, okay, okay, I think I'm heard. I can be heard, I guess I can see myself being set up this. Um, so now we can dig in console. We can look at the uh, the uh, happy hair stuff and we can you know, look at the print. I don't know why I would be doing that right now. Right now I really need this. Um, so I fired up how to get ready for this and um, I probably should turn up that. Um, and uh, I, uh, I'm like, okay, got to log into the uh, to the Switchfire Orange password. It wouldn't let in. So I wasn't able to get into the printer initially. Um, and I so we all for 45 minutes. I was about to cancel the stream, and I and I thought, you know what? I'm going to go look at the old stream and see how many key presses were in the password. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What password do I have, or piece of a password? Or what would I, you know, why is this different on this printer? Um, but there was one printer that was different because I made it after somebody else's printer. And instead of the password in there, it had their password saved in the config when I built the built again. Oh well. well. I'm all up and running now. Um, I figured out the password. I got back in. Everything's good. So basically, this is what we're doing. Hey, Nick. We're going to be upgrading the ERCF software on the on Switchfire Orange to the Happy Hair version 3. ERCF software version 3. Happy Hair. Um, this. Look at this, and I'm wondering, like, okay, is this the little ERC? This is somebody else's ERC of software. So I, I don't know the whole thing, but basically, he, he found the the, the the device itself. My mic's Okay, then what we'll do is this. We'll use this mic instead. 
that switches to the lapel mic instead of this thing. I don't know why my why my uh, SM7B would be staticky, but I'm betting it's actually the the wire the the uh, you know transfer of audio video from the two machines. Okay, so. Basically, we're going to load somebody else's software onto the machine. Um, now you might find my lips and audio might be a tiny bit out of sync. Uh, so, new features, supports all options for both tool head sensor and uh, loading, unloading, and the new senseless um, filament homing. No tool head sensor. Um, support sync load and unloading steps, moving the extruder and gear motor together, including the config with tool head sensor can work with flex materials. Um, moving the extruder and gear motor together. See, I think that's where 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 some of these these things are missing out. Um, that little device I have with the other thing, if it had a switch on it, if I was able to pull that off, that would have been like the ultimate in, in filament loading um, things. You got it right above the head, put a switch on it, and as soon as it pushes, it would flick the switch, and the loader would know immediately, hey, the filament's right at the tool head, time to yeah, but whatever. Um, so yeah, fully implements endless spool. I'm not really interested in endless spool. I don't think there would be in. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if I was running a factory, making one part over and over and over. I don't know. Um, logging is better. Optional fun visual representation of loading and unloading sequence. A fun visual representation. Okay. Optional. But it's fun. We'll have to see what that's about. I don't know. My coffee's over here. Um, formal support for the filament bypass block with associated new command and state if you're using it. Ability to reduce gear current during collision homing procedure to prevent grinding. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> Doesn't sound interesting. Um, convenience filament auto load function to check if the gate feature, to check gate feature and ensure filaments are all ready before print. Now that's what I wrote for that, for the, uh, the MMU. And that made it so much easier to, uh, to work with. So yeah. An auto load function, awesome. It just checks everything out. You can auto, uh, you can, you can check the load. You can unload it, and then basically wait and everything, uh, and then move on to the next one, and, and work through the sequence. And you'll know if everything's going to work when it goes to do the print. No need to do any customizations in existing macros. Okay. Update manager, persistence of state across restarts. Um, I, 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 I don't know. That can have bad effects and good effects. You know, really, if I want to completely restart, I, sh yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Reliable servo, no more kickback problems. Well, that's my biggest problem. That's basically why the, this machine is, and and and, uh, and uh, filament sensor, uh, why this machine is basically just sitting here doing nothing and has been for six months. Um, integrated encoder driver that implements filament measurement and automatic clog detection. Supports the clipper screen for ERCF. Okay, 
So we were also getting some other features, rework calibration routine to average measurements based on spring and filament. Sounds scary. Um, configuration via new test config. Which avoids constantly restarting Clipper or recalibration during setup. Yes, because that that was that was just so painful. Every, every, oh, work around of some of the ways to provoke Clipper time or two close errors. Although there's definitely bugs in the Clipper firmware. Okay, don't know what that is yet, but I know I've seen the error over and over and over again on this thing. Um, measure spring and filament after extruder homing for more accurate calibration reference. Add servo up delay, making gear to extruder transition of filament more reliable. That's a, uh, that should be helpful. And, uh, Test tracking commands to help diagnose issues with the encoder. Experimental logic to use spell guard filament homing. Not easy to set up using easy board and not compatible with it. Okay, so we have easy board. So there's some limitations there. Okay, well, I think it's time to basically install this. Um, so what am I doing here? So you need that. Um, let's, well, well it, it's, uh, it's a nice setup. It's not, it, it's not all manually done. So you just, uh, We're just going to clone the package from GitHub. This is nice. I like this. Once the package is cloned, we'll go into the folder and we will run the install. Log. And we are installing. Are you using EasyBoard or Fizek Burroughs ERB? Yes. So we have. Uh, I'm I'm using EasyBoard. I I, I think it's what's the like company called? The Rolls or something like that. This looks like EasyBoard controls. Yo, whoa, 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 my. Okay, well, I can check. I don't know. I have no answers for you. Um, so we'll go in our machine. And... Um, I don't know. I... Okay, that's got to be it. Um, I've just gone basically into the config file, and this is the printer, or the uh, the MCU for the printer. So I'm pretty well positive of that. That's got to be it. So we're just gonna go yes. Okay, sensorless selector operation. This allows for additional selector recovery steps, but disables the extra input on the easy board.
Um, well, it's in a hell of a place. I can't see that. And then when I get behind there, I'm too close to it, and I can't see when you know things are like that close to my face. So that's not working. So we're going to say no. Sensorless selector. Hey, Scotty Dog. Okay, so basically this is, this will just use the, the sensor on, on the, the selector. By that I mean the, uh, the carriage. How many gates do you have? I got nine gates, I'm sorry to say. <sighs> Set the J6 jumper pins to one, two, and four, five. They are already set to one, two, four, five. Okay, so nine gates. Have you built with a selector bypass? No. Oh. No, no. Do you have a tool head sensor you would like to use? I'm going to say no. If reliable, this is the smoothest and most reliable loading of unload. But if unreliable, it wrecks your life. <laughs> so we're going to go with no. <laughs> no. Uh, it, it, it's the bane of my, the, the, both of them. The MMU2 and the, the ERCF. Using the default MGE90S servo. I believe I am. Yeah, I am. Metal one. Okay, clog detection. This uses the ARCF encoder movement to detect clogs. And can call your filament runout logic. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense because basically, as the extruder motor is pulling things. It's not going to know if it's actually moving, but the encoder can check. And if the encoder doesn't see it moving and we're pushing, it can go, hey, something's not working. Would you like the ARCF to automatically adjust clog detection length? Yes. You automatically adjust that. And the spool. This uses filament runout detection to automate switching to a new spool with interrupt eruption. No. 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 Um, there's, <laughs> I don't see any use to it, really. It's kind of neat. It's a great idea. If you're in a print farm and you're using this basically as an endless spool um, and you're knocking your prints off the, the plate somehow and you just want them to be able to go, what's the length of your reverse Bowden tube in millimeters? Okay, so... Let's let's do something with this. Um, sorry, I'm walking around here. Hey, let's do something with this. Um, like get a new one. I know I am an owner of of large amounts of Bowden tube somewhere in this world. 
extremely large amounts of Bowden II. Um, so let's cut a new piece of Bowden II. Okay, so I do seem to recall it not liking a uh, uh, it liking a, a, a large aperture Bowden tube, not a skinny one, um, to avoid clog uh, not clogs, but uh, getting caught. I have this one too, which is like completely clear and monstrous in size. Let's try that one out first. Um, and what is it, 540, if I recall correctly? So there's 30. It's, uh, excuse me. Basically, at 493 millimeters, but not longer than the real length. Four hundred like to include all the ARCF config files in your printer config? Yes. Okay. Would you like to include the mini I2864 menu configuration extension for ERCF? Um, sure. Done. Restarting Clipper. Uh, okay. Okay, let's do a full reboot, maybe? Unparsed config option, manage services, clipper, detected in section. So it's added something to the Moonraker, um, the Moonraker update, and it doesn't recognize. Of course, it's not like I was running this on the latest version of Clipper, but I don't think that matters. Okay, Clipper state, ready. Okay, um, 
here we go. Interactive prompts. Um, I don't have any macros set up. So that's going to have to be something I need to do. What's happened to my... There we go. <clears throat> Must be referenced in your printer config. Let's do we do we see the hardware now? Well, I guess we should have seen the hardware before, right? No, we wouldn't have seen the hardware before. I'm not seeing the hardware. It didn't. No, it did. The RCF menu is included. But none of the other ERCF stuff is included. Okay, um, so that didn't do what it was supposed to. It did back up my printer in big file. So what's the difference between printer CFG and printer CFG? <sighs> okay, so that's not good. It's weird how it included the menu config. Old versions will be moved to a number backup file. Well, I cleaned up everything before I started. Well, like here we go. We we're gonna have to go and and uh, your CF hardware. Your CF software. CF parameters referenced to our printer config. Client macros should also be referenced. So it did some of it. Here's the originals. Oh, wait a minute. No, maybe that's what it added. Is that what it added? You know what? Don't say. Don't say. No, those are already in there. Oh, well. I'm going to go in and just... Well, that was not what I wound up doing. What did it do? I don't know what it did. Hardware, software, for hours. Client macros should be referenced if you don't already have a working blah 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 macros. Hey Jeff. Okay, so I think we're okay. That should be enough to make things go. Very 
revision history. I now have an ERCF MCU. Happy Hair is in the in the manager now. But I do have this config option. Update manager happy hair. So we might have to look into that. Okay, so I do see the tools. I'm not seeing any of the other macros, so let's no. Let's go in and see if there, there are some more. I'm sure there are. Oh, that's not working. ERCF. Name already exists. Okay. this group. Get rid of the group. Macros. There we go. ERCF. Unknown group. Trash. ERCF. Edit. Eject. Home. Unlock. motors off okay let's just for now I'm going to add them all and we'll deal we'll figure out what we need and then we'll clean it up as we go because it's just going to be a mess otherwise okay so ERCF home did it. Okay, so I think now that I'm at this point, I'm thinking we can safely, I think we can move over here. I don't know. Uh, let's see. We want the switchwire orange. There we go. Now you can see what's going on and I can read the instructions and do the stuff at the same time. Oh, I knew that this was going to be a, uh, this is going to be a task to get all this, to get through all this. You know, it's like we're only here and there's like a lot, well, there's a lot of information, but there's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, the visual log box shows individual steps in the loading process. Okay, config loading and unloading sequences explained.
Note, if a tool head sensor is configured, it will become the default filament homing method. Yeah, well, wishful thinking. I've never been able to get one to work properly. Consistently, sorry. Maybe, maybe it worked properly, but it didn't work properly for a long time. So I did get it to work properly. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Extruder homing current. So we can change the homing current. So if it's grinding, we can do that. Okay, start with filament unloading and sitting unloaded and sitting in the gate the grateful tool head one. First, ERCF clamps down the servo. Yeah. And it pulls a short amount of filament through. If it doesn't see any filament at the encoder. It will try load encoder retries times, two by default, and if no filament, it will report the error. <laughs> Get ready to see this a lot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, the speed of this initial movement is controlled by short move speed. The acceleration is defined on the stepper gear motor config in the hardware. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> uh, we'll do a fast movement to load the Bowden in the filament. The long speed move is, is what controls that. This is really good. This is really good. Like I, I'm so glad I'm going to be able to go in and adjust these things. Um, or at least know if something's weird and I'm like why is that? If that was only, you know, moving faster or going a little further, you, you, it, the information is probably going to be here in order to figure out what you need to change. Much more detail. Um, this movement can be broken into multiple movements with the num of uh, moves as a workaround to overcome timer too close errors from Clipper. So we could change the number of moves if we're getting timer too close errors and loading the filament. If you keep your size step, step size to 8 for the gear motor, you're likely to be able to operate with a single fast movement. Really? The length of this movement is set when you calibrate ERCF and should be stored in the ERCF config bars. ERCF bars config. <laughs> There's an advantage option that allows for correction of this move if slippage is detected, controlled by apply Bowden correction and low Bowden tolerance. Okay, so brain ready to explode, filled with new variable names, and we'll move on to number four. The example shown uses a tool head sensor, but you can figure some of sensorless homing. Extruder homing max is the maximum distance to give it advance in order to attempt to home the extruder. Extruder homing step, step size when homing. An extruder homing current. How much, what percentage of the current are we to use to prevent grinding the filament? Okay. I, I think, you know, I'm better off coming back to this if I'm, I'm having issues. So we'll finish going through the loading, but I don't think I'm going to go through all of the unloading um, and then we'll get into the configuration we'll, we'll skip all the you know the runout detection sequences and stuff like that um, move the tool head the most critical transition point ERCF will advance the extruder looking to see if the filament was successfully picked up in the case of the tool head sensor, it's deterministic because it will advance to the sensor and use this new homing as a new homing point. For sensorless, it will look at the encoder movement, implying that the filament has been picked up. Optionally, this can this can be made to run gear and extruder motor synchro, synchro, 
synchronously for greater reliability. Sync load length. millimeters of synchronized extruder loading at entry to extruder. This further aid to reliability, your CF will use the spring in the filament. By delaying servo release, by delay servo release millimeters, when using synchronous load, this will relax the compression in the filament leading to quieter loading. Okay. For extruder only load, this will keep the pressure on the gear to aid grabbing the filament. So that's almost like that little device I have there. It's the little springiness that when it stops pushing the motor, it still provides the push without grinding its gears. That really grinds my gears. Where's that come from? Probably somewhere there. Um, with tool head sensor enabled, there's a little more to this step. Well, we don't have tool head sensors, so that's not enabled. Now the filament is under exclusive control of the extruder. Filament is moved the remaining distance to the melt zone. Okay, yeah, so basically then it just does its normal load. Okay, well we might better look at this too. Starting the filament loaded in tool one. This example is okay, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. So this is a tool head sensor. One. The air CIF moves the filament out of the extruder at nozzle and load speed. This is approximate for sensorless, but the distance move can be optimized using the tool head sensor the setting of the extruder nozzle and sensor to nozzle. I hope everybody's as lost as I am. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm sitting behind the... the, the, the that's it. Sorry. My face might be like right behind the, the little symbol in the corner of the channel. Oh well, not going to worry about it. So once at where it believes the gear entrance to the extruder, an optional short synchronized move can be configured. This is controlled by sync upload unload speed and sync unload length. This is a great safety step and hair pull operation, but also serves to ensure that the air CF gear has grip on the filament. If synchronized unload is not configured, it will still perform the fold and unload with an initial short move of the gear move only. Again, to ensure filament is gripped. The filament is now extracted quickly through the Bowden. The speed is controlled by long move speed, and the movement can be broken up with numb moves, similar to when loading. That's what I was going to say. Uh, completion of this fast... Completion of the fast Bowden move. At this point, the ERCF performs a series of short moves looking for when the filament exits the encoder. The speed is controlled by short move speed. When the filament is released by the encoder, the remaining of the distance to the park position is moved at short move speed. The filament is now unloaded. Yay, filament! It made like a whole round trip. It was like a vacation for filament. Let's all go to the extruder. Um, sorry. <sighs> okay, so this is a breakdown of all the variables. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Brain has exploded. Um, no, it doesn't make sense. It's just like all the little key details, though, the, the variables you need and all that stuff. It's like, wow. Okay, so this is like advanced options. Using stall guard for homing, we don't want to do that. Not readily compatible with easy board. Incompatible. 
essentialist selector homing, which hijacks the gear and stop configuration. Sync unload the length. Yeah. Hair pulling. Um, no thanks. No thanks. I've already done that. That's what brought us here in the first place was hair pulling. They should have spelled it H A R E. Hair pulling. Happy hair. Uh, Air CF can, can use it. Uh, clog runout detection. Air CF can use its encoder to detect filament runout. So basically, yes. Or clog. Can it differentiate between the two? Maybe. Yeah, I guess it would. So yeah, um, if the encoder, if the extruder is pulling filament, the encoder should be able to see filament moving. Is basically the clog detection. If it's if the encoder is pushing filament and it doesn't see it moving, clog. That makes sense to me. Uh, tool to gate, mapping, and endless pool. No thank you. No thank you. Visualization of filament position. So we basically get this visual log of, of what happens. Uh, filament bypass. We don't have any filament bypass blocks. Um, Adjusting configuration at runtime. Modified at runtime without restarting Clipper. Use the ERCF test config command to do this. Oh, so you can basically type in ERCF test config, home position to nozzle 45, and change the home position to nozzle. designed for testing and it will not be persisted. Once you find your tuned settings, update ERCF parameters. Oh, um, ERCF ref updated calibration reference. Hey, look at this, ERCF preload. It works like the uh, Prusa MMU and spins the gear. Okay, so, is that where we start? I don't think it is, I think we need to uh, Covering state, state persistence. We need to find the configuration. So he's, he's loading the filament in a single move, 200 millimeters per second. Now, when were these updated? Ten months ago, last year.
Okay, here we go. This is where all the fun begins. Definitions. Here we see a servo out. Unknown command. It's making weird noises now. I think these is is uh, unhidden. The um, yeah, their motors off. So let's do a preload on one. Or no, on zero. Really? Is that a thing? Well, I'm going to have to say that's kind of annoying. So, so the first thing it did, the first thing it did was exactly the same thing that uh, the standard software did. Was slap the uh, slap the server down, roll the filament out of the machine so it can never load it. So that was its first action. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm really, really hoping that it's just got the motor backwards. Gear stepper, selector stepper. Let's hope it's just got the motor backwards and it really meant to roll filament in not out. So I guess it's the gear stepper. Because it can't be the selector stepper. I really don't like the squealing sound from the motor. I'm going to have to figure out what in the config is causing that. What in the config?
Okay, so pull this out. Get us some filament fed in properly. And we'll try preload gate. Oh, really? <laughs> it's like, yeah, done. <laughs> it's like, okay. Oh, really? <laughs> it's not. It's not done. It's not done. So, um, for some reason, um, let's shut the motors off. For some reason, this it's decided, decided that, that uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to push the filament in, in and, and then, then I'm not going to take, take it out. out. And, and uh, you're, you're not, not going, going anywhere after, after that point. point. But, of course, I don't even know how it knows where, where the filament is. So I think I need to go through this. ERCF. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so yeah, here's the numbers right here. So if I can go in and find those, I should be able to set them from what they were previously. Anyway. 
Okay. Um. Here's the home. And then we'll do reload on zero again. So that's kind of failed, right? Filament not detected in gate zero. No, there's definitely filament in gate zero. Definitely have filament. If I shove it through, it goes through. Um, but if I do that, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna do it. Um, um, ERCF motors off. Motors off. So I'm going to push that out of the way. I'm going to reload this into the up to the gate. Push that in. Okay. Um, What did it just say? Okay. I don't understand how that's going to help running the preload because, like, I'm sorry, but wouldn't the preload need to be the thing you run in order to load the filament in order to do this test? I, I could be completely wrong, but I would have thought preloading the filament. These motors are so noisy. Oh, there's, there's filament, filament in there. There's filament in there. So it did load the filament. Okay. 
Yeah, you, you do, do your, your new thing. thing. You, I'll just wait here and do nothing. Hey, hey Coley. Two mics. How would I be on two mics? What's going on? How would that? Desktop audio. <laughs> Maybe I need to hear this. Um, let's see. I'm not, not going to be able to hear it there. There's, There's no speakers, speakers on this machine. machine. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I dumb? Yeah, kind of. Sometimes. Am I, am I dumb? Yeah, kind of. Sometimes. Am I, am I dumb? That's very, very, uh, Echoey, hollowy sounding. Hmm. I'll have to, I'll have, I don't know what's going on with that. So now that we're there, we're unable to load filament. Well, you gotta shut the motors off again. Oh, so I went ahead and tried to do it anyway. Okay. Well, I don't have any filament in there, machine, because you won't let me do the preload filament function. Okay, so I'm going to try this from here. And at least this way I can actually see what's going on, because I think that's the big problem here. Let's shut the motors off. ERCF motors off. Stop the squeak. Move that out there. Gates closed. Preload on zero. I have no idea why nothing happened. I have no idea why nothing happened. It literally did all the things that it would need to do to make things happen. It moved the filament a little bit. It moved the filament. No, it didn't move the filament at all. It rolled the filament out of the out of the block again. Is this thing heated up properly? It is. So, so it's, it's, it's moved, moved to the block. It's toned. Um, ERCF calibrate single. Does a 
the home. Filament pushes out. Failed to detect a reliable home position on the system. What? Okay, 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 I get it. I get it. It's, what it's doing is it's basically feeling the waters. It's trying to see how far it needs to go down before this stops moving. On this attempt, so we'll pull it right out. Okay, okay, so, so that's, that's dumb. dumb. So, so basically... Oh, Sorry. Sorry. I, I mean, mean, oh, frick. Because somehow, somehow serving, serving a different, different image to a different computer. computer. Um, I'm sorry. sorry. Motor's, Motor's off. off. Machine. And I want to go into parameters. 490. 590. 520. So we'll try 520. Let's, Let's basically, basically push, push it, it that much, much further to start. start. That, that should get it down, down to the, the exterior motor. motor. Um, that's, that's good. It has a horrible, horrible, horrible habit of unloading the filament, filament too far. far. And, and it's, it's always, always done that. that. But, but maybe, maybe there's, there's a parameter, parameter we can change. change. Everything set, set up. up. We, we need, need a home. home. We're, We're almost, almost at 200, 200 degrees, degrees again. again. <clears throat> so we'll give it a second, second here. here. Okay, so ERCF calibrates single tool zero. Set heat and temperature. Do you want to know? Set, 
So, so somehow, somehow it, it, it got, got to here, here and, and said, okay, yeah, we're good. And it set the 497.5 millimeters. Restart Clipper, Clipper for the calibration to become active. active. I don't, I don't believe, believe it. it. I, don't I don't believe, believe it. it. I, I have, have my, my doubts. doubts. Um, um, but but here's, here's, here's number, number two. two. Hey, squirrel. Okay. I'm, I'm going to try the same thing on two, two on one, and, and see what happens. Why not, right? What could possibly go wrong? Do we have to do it on one and two? And An issue with the air CF has been detected, well, out of a print. Calibration for tool T1 fill. Aborting. Error picking up filament at gate. Not enough movement detected at encoder. Why? Uh, so what, what'd you do? Well, what state did you leave me in here? Motor's off. Like really? You 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 didn't. You didn't load the filament. You didn't load the filament. How are you failing? I can see you loading the filament. I can see the filament going into the the, the, the encoder, and getting to the encoder, and as soon as it hits the encoder and moves the encoder, it stops the software from working and says they're an issue. Not enough movement detected at the encoder. I don't know how, because it did exactly what you had it do. Exactly. And, and like... It works no problem. So I'm not sure what the problem is. I'm not sure why the problem is. But I'm going to guess it's... This is all... Because each one of the things on this machine acts as an independent thing. 
Every one of these things requires its own configuration. Like, I mean, nine of these things. You gotta configure the length, you gotta configure, the, well, maybe not the length, that, that's probably, should be shared. It's not in the original version, though. And you have to configure the, it, it's, what it does is it configures a percentage of zero. So if, if this is 500, and this is, is 505, it'll say it's, it's, it's 1% more than zero, than the tool zero. So, it does a, a, an individual configuration based on the difference with, with zero, was the original version. Um, but then there's the, the hats. You don't have an individual, um, you know, servo angle. So you have to use individual hats, which is different for every single filament you use. Like, yeah, this, this, this is just a total nightmare. It really is. The whole thing's just an absolute nightmare. So, I don't know what to do with this. I can continue running this over and over and over and over again. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, what a piece of crap. What a piece of crap. The servo's not even down. It's rolling the thing in and out. Calibration not saved because it's not considered valid. Yeah, yeah, divide by zero would cause an error. Yes, definitely. Um, calibrate tool zero. Okay. Over comes, servo goes down, it pops back up, servo's up, and it's already failed. Calibrate tool one. I really, really am getting tired of this piece of crap. I really am. I really, really, really am. It's just, it's just so unreliable by design. Like I said, though, I have got a print out of it. But that's like the, the it's like the $200 chameleon. So you spend $200 on a device to print something with two colors in it. Maybe three, maybe the eyes were different colors. So I don't know what to do. No matter what software you're running, you still have to deal with the hardware. And it's just so flaky in so many ways that it's very, very hard to deal with. So what are you telling me here? I have the wrong thing in the thing. I have the wrong hat. I have the wrong what? I shouldn't have a number three, I should have a number two. See, that's, that's, that's the big problem here. This, and, and I'm going to say it, these. This is the big problem. You have to print ten of these for every things. So these are, there's 90 of these things. And they're all minusculely different thicknesses. 
that's not the right box. And, and they're all minusculely different thicknesses. And that minuscule difference in thickness is how the difference in pressures are applied to the filament to roll out the filament. Which is just, just in itself, printing ten, uh, nine, ten things, whatever, for a configuration is inherently bad. It's, that's not really a configuration. That's that you have actually had to make. Like, I can't even. I can't even imagine. What's the combination and permutations of of, uh, of nine? What's nine factorial? Or no, no nine. What is that? How does that work? There's literally tens of thousands of possibilities of configuration in this thing just hardware-wise. I can't find the top, I can't find them. I cannot find the box of top hats for the ERCF. I'm ready, almost ready for the next Trihydrodex tri video. I got my, uh, I got my, uh, um, uh, rails in, um, the uh, donation in the last stream from Jeff, thank you, um, has paid for the uh, the bearings for the bed, the aluminum collars, and the BMG clone kits. Hey, Bert! Um, so all that, all that's on the way. That should be here next week. Um, And then I have all the rails, so we'll be able to put, we'll be able to build the entire XY carriage. We'll be able to get most of the Z in place and get all the belts and everything all done. So I'm looking forward to that. Chameleon didn't play well with Clipper. Oh. Does this come out? Yeah, that's fine. There's no problem there. Okay. Let's let's see what happened. So now we've changed from a three to a five. Yeah, now it doesn't work at all. An issue? Yeah, no, the issue is the, the design. It's, it's ridiculous. Like your chances of getting this thing working are like one in 500,000. <laughs> Just a piece of junk. You're just a serious piece of junk. Somehow, 
let's 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 uh run it again. There's no, no filament in there. Okay, there's no filament in there. What happens? Does this feed through? Feeds through just fine. Feeds through just fine. But it doesn't. It doesn't feed through just fine. It feeds through just fine when I'm pushing it by hand. But when that motor presses on it, it changes the angle, it bends the filament, and it jams up against something. And that's what's happening. Like, it's, it's fine, like when I do it. But now I'll do the calibrate. And now I'm just holding it here by hand. Yeah, and it jams up against it. And it's like, yeah, that's that's calibrated. Yeah, that 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 movement you made, you nailed it. That zooming back and forth, yeah, I've got calibration numbers. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty well over this. So over it. So maybe we need to press less hard? Or maybe we need to press really hard? There's a four. Okay, okay so, so there's, there's less hard. Maybe it doesn't line up. Maybe there's something wrong here. No, it winds up perfectly. And... Calibrate to a one! There is nothing in between four and five. So four works, four pushes the filament. Without pushing down so hard to bend it so that it won't. Oh, 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 okay. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. Sometimes. Sometimes.
It's in there, though. Mm -hmm. The filament, that is. Okay, let's shut the motors off. Because that wine is just so annoying. I'm going to have to look, compare the old config. Um, I don't ever remember the motors whining like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, me too. Me too. And that, that machine is, uh, is like a, a, a 2000 plus dollar printer. The bamboo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what to do about that. Um, I, you know, I'm going to finish Trihydrodex. Like that's that's going to be my primary mission right now. But the problem is, if I were to buy a $2,000 printer, I would literally not be building anything for like six months. Because I wouldn't be able to afford it. I'm also really thinking that I have to move again. We've got a neighbor problem already. Um, and I'm, I'm, like, I'm going to say it. The laws are insane. They're just stupid. Um, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. $2,000? I don't know. That's a, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Um, so yeah, I moved into this building with the expectation that it was a no smoking building with no smoking on the balconies. Basically, I won't have to put up with any smell of any cigarette smoke. And that's what I was told. That yeah, no, no, you can't, nobody can smoke on the balconies, nobody can smoke in the apartments, nothing. Well, it turns out that's not true. People are allowed to smoke on their balconies. So, literally, five feet away from my pet patio door, there's people sitting there smoking constantly all day. It's absolutely disgusting. Fucking pigs. I'm, I'm just, sorry, like, it's disgusting that you think it's okay for you to pump carcinogenic smoke into my apartment. And, like it's constant it's constant like 12 hours a day i can't live in peace anymore because of it it just throws my stress up through the roof i start to have anxiety attacks i do not want to smell cigarette smoke at all it makes me sick but uh yeah nope called the apartment they're like oh no no they're allowed to smoke on their balcony and i'm like yeah but they're not allowed to put carcinogenic smoke into my apartment, and that's what they're doing. Oh no, they're allowed to put smoke on their balcony. I'm like, are you stupid? I didn't say that. But, you know, that's, that's like, ah, you're, you're, you're literally backing up them destroying my quality of life. And it's just so frustrating. And, and, like, literally, the law says smokers do not have any rights to smoke. They don't. But yet, this can be a thing where you can be destroying someone's peace and quiet, and they're, they're basically destroying my home because there's constantly the smell of cigarette smoke flowing through it. Sorry, I'm going to stop ranting about that now. But it's, it's awful. And it's just disgusting that it's allowed.
And I know there might be smokers out there, but... Okay, so that... Uh, I don't know. Somehow, that decided that it made it to the... It only went to here. What? Are you insane, machine? Are you crazy? Motor's off. Oh my god. Move that out of the way. Let's calibrate tool zero again. Because obviously there's something wrong, and one's at 500 and one's at 720. And I'm pretty sure that's not possible. Failed to detect reliable home position on this attack. No, you did it. You did it. You made it right to the end. Five hundred and forty two millimeters now. Okay, so 540, that does sound reasonable. Restart Clipper. Okay, so we're taking out the yellow and we're going to put in back the teal. That's not going to work, is it? Because it's going to go and not be able to pull it. Crap. So, number one is yellow. I'll have to figure out how to get the teal in there. Maybe, uh, maybe, um, change the mode on it. Okay, calibrate to a one. What the hell is that? Oh my god, this thing is awful. It just literally did a fast move and it didn't move at all. It, it, you heard the ee, but the motor didn't move. The motor didn't do anything. But I don't know why this thing is so weak. Like it's got no, it's got no oomph behind it. It's got no power in the motors. Like I shouldn't be able to do that that easy. Like this has no, no power at all. If I, if I go and do a calibrate and I just lightly hold my thumb on this, what's going to happen? Yeah, it's got no power at all. That's why it doesn't work. It squeezes that thing down and just can't move because there's no electricity going to it. It's probably also a piece of crap. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Um, ERCF hardware. Okay. 
volt current. Point three. And point seven for the run. So we'll get back up to 200 here. Degrees, that is. And we'll try it again. And again, 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 and again. Sorry. Sorry. I guess that's what I'm just used to with this thing. You know, I've literally run this configuration hundreds of times. I'm running the Nema 14, so yeah, they're just the, the small motors. No, on the on here. I don't, I don't get it. it. I, I just don't get it. it. I, I don't understand what you're doing. doing. Are, Are you, you like just going, okay, okay I'm, I'm going to move this. this. Now it's 723. Ratio is 0.9. Too hard, hard to push, push through. through. No, that, that seems, seems okay. okay. So, so number two, two has, has a. a... I don't know. You can't, can't tell. tell. It has, it has a, a two, two hat on it. So right, right now, now one, one has, has a three, three two, two has, has a one, one. Oh, sorry, sorry zero, zero has a three, two, two has, has a one, one. and th 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 one, one has a one, one. And, and two has, has a two. two. Sorry. Unknown filament, filament position. position. Recovering, Recovering state. state. What, what the hell does that mean? mean? Okay, so it must be running this a known distance and then pulling it back up that way. I don't understand why it only does it once though. Because that doesn't really get you much of a much of a, a an average or whatever you're looking for. So we probably need to change the filament in this. This is just not moving easy. It does realize it needs to be able to do that, eh? Like like I don't I don't understand how any of this is supposed to be able to pull filament from a roll. There's just not enough strength behind it. Okay, well, let's see what we get here. That's three.
Well, because it can't pull the filament. It just has no strength to be able to pull that filament. It just runs the motor against the side of it for a little bit, for fun. So again, I don't know what I'm doing here, but we're taking off a three and we're starting back at a, a two maybe. Maybe we'll just go down to a two, maybe one. Go down to a one. And start over at the beginning. Because strangely enough, the reason the yellow started working was because we put a, th uh, a thinner hat on it. Could you imagine like, an engineering solution that required all this is just so unusable overall like there, there's just built-in unreliance um, like it, it looks cool you, you think oh yeah that's a that's a good idea but it's really it's almost an unworkable solution overall because again if I'm pushing down on this filament hard enough to uh, to uh, get it to feed, um, I'm bending the filament. And it's going to push it out of alignment. And it failed again. But yet, if I take this, I can take this filament and push it through no problem. If I un, you know, unwind some filament and press it in there and rerun it and just have the filament exist, can you do the thing, please? What does it do? It has no problem until it has to pull it through the freaking carrot feeder. So yeah, like, like there's way too many points of failure. Like the point of failure here is not the ERCF right now. Like it seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. The point of failure here is the management system for the filament is just unmanageable. Like if I literally did not have this on here, like, and again, again, there's no, there's no issue moving filament through here. Like it moves fine. Like I can, I can slide that back and forth. If I have the filament like that, then we do the two, do the deal. Now all the loose filaments behind here. Right? There we go. It pulls the filament, no problem. Until it gets to the air, the, the, air, the, the carrot patch. And then as soon as it starts to pull filament through here, for some reason, it's really tight. So again, let's plug that back in. Get that out of the way. Okay. You get this. But again, I can tell. I can tell immediately. There's no way that that's going to pull through. There's no way at all. Okay, I'm a liar. No, I'm an idiot. idiot. I'm not a liar. I ain't no Nostradamus, that's for sure. Okay, so that's... That's, uh... Oh, Scotty Dog! Sorry, I did not see that. Thank you so much. Scotty Dog, thanks for the 30. More parts. 
Sorry. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I, I've actually been funding most of the, as much as I could of, of Trihydrodex from from you guys. Bert's put in a lot of money. Jeff's put in some money, and now Scotty's added added thirty dollars to that. And uh, yeah, I'll. I'll uh, Oh, I guess my next thing to order is the bed. I'm going with a, uh, a Voron 250 bed. No, I'm going, yes, yes, a Voron 250. I tried it at 250, actually. It fits in well with the triple thingy. Okay, so here we go again. We've got numbers there. What are the numbers? It was 1.01. I can't complain about that, but I can. I can complain about lots of things. <laughs> the one right now is that I'm almost out of coffee. And I need more. But that's a very valid complaint. Some of my complaints are more whininess. I only had uh, I only had two modes of operation anyway. I'm either just normal, just running fine, or I'm outraged. <laughs> and that's that's like my two modes. Hey, poor boy, welcome back. So yeah, that, that's that's the the I have something I've sort of figured out about myself over the last six months. Okay, so I have the blue loaded up now. So that's going to be tool f four, which just, I thought I was going to say five, but no. Look at it go, first time. First time, 1.03. Oh yeah, you know what? The second favorite printer, really. And my printers have nothing, to, my favorites have nothing to do with productivity of the printers. My favorites were when, when it came to the builds. Um, so yeah, I really, I really hope you enjoy that build, because it's a lot of fun. I've been looking... I've been looking for a, uh, another ender printer. Uh, it's pretty, pretty close, close to 1.03. I'm not going to complain about that. Oh, this, this is this is another tight one. one. Yeah, that's, that's better. better. Yeah, so I I've. Uh, I've got uh, quite, quite a bit of the printer on the way, actually. We are going to have a Trihydrodex stream next week. We'll get all the all the the uh, the, carri the X Y carriage all railed up. I'll even get some of the um, some of the. Um, I don't know. I guess I won't. I was going to say some, some of the tool that I've built, but I've got, I don't have any fans. Maybe I'll order those. Um, okay, so what do we need? We need tool head number five.
Okay, that's, that's got slippage. slippage. Massive, Massive slippage. slippage. See, See, this, this still has, has some, some bad stuff. stuff. It, it just told me that, oh yeah, all's good. good. The ratio is 1.26. No, the ratio, the ratio is not 1.26. That's not working. That's not going to work. We need to take this off. It's a three. I don't know. Let's find a two. Or a one. There's a two. You know, I do like the idea of the gates, so that's, that's kind of cool, cool. Where you can run it right up to the gate, and the only thing that opens the gate is the magnet on, on the, on the, uh, on here. But, uh, oh, much better. And that's not good. So, so why is it doing that? that? Is, is it because, because it's hard, hard to ball? ball? No, no, it's, it's not, not hard, hard to ball. ball. Means add a thicker hat, right? So you, so you see, see the, the problem, problem eh? You'd you think, think slippage. slippage. It's, it's slipping while it's loading. Put on a bigger pad. pad. And, and the, the answer, answer is not to put on a bigger pad. pad. I don't, I don't know, know what the answer, answer is. is. That's, That's messed, messed up. up. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. That, that is messed, messed up. up. So, so it, exactly what's happening is that, yeah, yeah you, you put, put in the bigger hat, hat so, so it pushes, pushes more pressure onto the filament, filament but, but then, then it bends, bends the filament. filament. There's, There's some, some, you know, change to the direction. direction. And, and what, what that forces is that the, uh, the filament drives inside the side of the carriage and doesn't load properly. Okay, so, so there, there, you know what, I'm, I'm going to cut, cut this off. off. Throw it on the carpet, because... See, that, that, that doesn't, doesn't work. work. That, that doesn't, doesn't work, work at all. What's, What's going, going on? Why, Why you stop? stop? Why, Why you stop? stop? You don't stop. stop. Like, that's, that's tight. tight. Like, it's getting caught on things on the way in. The... The... Okay. okay. That's, That's while it's moving. moving. 
How am I able to do that? How is that a thing? It's because the... No, oh, come on, you stupid piece of crap. It, this is what it needs. It needs a sensor on the servo to know if the servo's bounced. That's what it needs. <laughs> we need to add a button to the servo so the servo knows when the servo's down. Actually, what, what needs to be done here is this. This whole mechanism needs to be changed out and has to have a an EMA motor on there with a screw down clamp. Then you can, the, basically, the motor will turn shunk, and put pressure on the hat. All the hats can be the same. The motor turns, pushes the pressure on the hat. Well, how much pressure do you need? You can set that for each individual one. As opposed to what I'm doing, which is going crazy slowly. Um, so I don't know why that's bouncing. But I'm going to have to say that it's something to do with this being a five. And if I were to put the Yeah, that looks all fine. If I were to put the one on there, it wouldn't bounce anymore. It won't roll the filament at all, because it doesn't seem to roll the filament with a five on it. So, I don't know how putting the ones on the one's going to help. There's a one. Seriously, how is that a thing? I am so confused right now. The hole, the hole on that motor is so low that you can just push it out of the way. Okay, do number five properly now. Uh, but yeah, yeah, like, how? Oh, brain hurt. Is my mic acting up? Yeah, I've been told my mic is acting up. I haven't been able to figure out what's going on. Okay, is that better? I don't know why, but it looks like all my uh, noise suppression shut off, or is now clipping. I don't know why my stream has been acting up. might be better. I have to go check over here. This is the only place I can hear myself. I guess I can hear myself. No, it isn't, is it? No, it isn't, is it? Why 
does it sound like there's a bunch of machines running? Okay. Okay, so that should be better. I don't know what's going on though. I still don't know what's causing that. But there is definitely definitely some weird audio source. I didn't think I could get audio from that camera, but that seems to be what it was. Main cam. Yeah, literally audio coming from a camera with, it, I don't know. Okay, thanks for bugging me about it. Unless they like wanted to be in a tunnel. So I think based on, on, on this, I think we have this configured for six different things of filament. What I want to do, though, of course, because I don't trust this thing as far as I can throw it. Motors on? No, motors aren't on. Home this. Home. Home it. Home. Icky. Smack! It <laughs> just slams that. That switch down there boom <laughs> okay we do need to restart the dude no i forgot about this. wow that audio must be a lot better <laughs> again i'm like so sorry about that Okay, um, let's home. I'm gonna go fill up the coffee.
Mic now? Okay, mic now. So yeah, I guess uh, somehow when I went out of range, I don't know. Thanks. Um, okay, so we've got that, got that. We have a problem here. Does not want to load filament past that point. Basically right to there. That's as far as filament will go. There's like some type of ridge or something in here. Just them shutting the motors down to the point where you can just push them out of the way is like, makes this thing so much easier to use just from that. So I am definitely seeing advantages of, of happy hair over, over the standard, over the original top. Yeah. Again, what is going on? It seriously can't get it past the Bowden Colin. Why? Why? It can't get it. What? I did not want to do this. I did not want to use this. Measure it off the original. Um, so looks like we're going to a, uh, you know, from a, um, it's like a 1.9 millimeter internal diameter or something like that. Like, uh, um, instead of like big. But in order to make this work, I'm going to make a slight adjustment. Take a knife. I'm going to carve out this because we're just we're basically just swapping one problem for another here if we don't because it'll just get caught on the way out of here.
Okay. <laughs> oh, we've got to do a home. And I hate this. I absolutely hate this because I have no idea what's going on now. And the motor just stopped running. It literally was going forward and then it went, I'm not a motor anymore. I'm a thing that goes and that's what it did. This is the biggest failure point in this damn thing is this motor is a piece of garbage to the point that it actually stops turning with no resistance. It just so that's what failed there was the motor stopped turning. You notice it did push the filament when the motor was turning. So that, that's basically a, a constant possibility for failure every time you use it. Well, seriously, the first thing you did was roll the filament out of the machine. I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. That's the first thing it did was roll the filament back out of the machine as far as it could roll it. So let's see if it does it again. We'll hear the servo go down. Can't see, but the servo will go down and this thing will turn the wrong way. No, nope, that worked. First time. a sensor there's no sensor there is no sensor it, it. <laughs> fail to reach the tool head sensor there is no tool head sensor oh god freaking kidding me so that configuration we did meaningless because as you can tell this actually did load the filament but now it's looking for a tool head sensor so none of the stuff we did mattered i i i noticed that when the configuration wasn't there
Is this my mic? Is this thing still scratchy? Or is this smooth now? I mean, like, is this working? I mean, like, is this working? No, it's not, is it? Well, you know, all this expensive equipment, and it doesn't work any good at all. How is my microphone scratchy? Okay, there's audio. I've added the audio subsystem to this screen, which was weird because I used this for day. Okay, so color selector, toolgate map, sensorless selector, fog detection, endless spool, persistence level. So basically our problem right now, our only problem right now is this thing is looking for a tool head sensor. And there isn't. highlighter the same color as the uh, text it's highlighting trailer switch centralized what So, yeah, this is right. Home position to nozzle 72. Revo Boron with Clockwork 2 extruder using um, extruder homing. 62 with dual head sensor. There is no dual head sensor. No dual head sensor. I, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't get it.
Yeah, I don't see anything. Uh, no, tool head sensor. My tool head sensor here. Yeah, tool head sensor is there. Okay. Is it as simple as that? Okay, so I'm going to uh, turn to home it again. It's not there in the list anymore. Wow. So just having the tool head sensor turned on. Oh, great. Not that it worked. <laughs> not that it worked at all. <laughs> uh, audio still good? Weird. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into what happened with the audio because it it was really messed up. I'd swear that mic that uh, microphone on that webcam was on too. We weren't just getting two mic sources. I think we we're getting three. So what happened? Oh, it just it just did its thing. It's like. Yeah, yeah, you don't need filament. Let me roll that out of the machine for you. Now let's try it again. Boom. Now we gotta watch it. I gotta be right here with you, looking at that servo, that's motor, to see if it rolls stuff out or in. In. Rolling it in. And why can I not extrude filament? Are you kidding? Nice purple filament. Okay. T1. And I'm just going to try it again. One. And there we go. The motor goes wee. But oh, it's just ridiculous. Is that a joke? Are you freaking kidding me? Ah, that's so annoying. Because you know it 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 would work if the motor 
didn't screw up because the motor is basically just a piece of crap. This is just a kit from China. So it's basically just a pile of garbage. What are you doing? Why would you freaking roll the filament out of the machine as your first action? It's just dumb. How do you expect it to work when the first thing you do is slap the servo down and literally roll the filament out of the machine? Sorry, that's that's the thing that got me on the whole enraged rabbit carrot feeder in the first place. The why why I just absolutely could not stand it was because 40% of the time when you chose a uh, filament, all it did was slap the servo down and back the filament out of the machine. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm getting frustrated with it because it's inconsistent because I just did the exact same thing and it did something completely different. I'm gonna make sure T2 is loaded properly before we go. It is loaded just fine. Ready to go. So T2. So unload T1. And then the next thing we should be doing is moving the carriage over to two. And it should only push filament out. It shouldn't slap that servo down and rewind everything. So we're rewinding now. There we go. Over to there. And filament's coming out. And the filament's going down. And the filament's down to here. I can... An issue. There's no issue. What's the issue? What the fuck is the issue? Sorry. <laughs> What's the issue? You don't have the, the thing down. Uh. Okay. Excuse my French. Sure that was French. Multilingual channel. Um, so it thinks everything is unloaded, is loaded still. Variable saved. So if I go E2 again, going to unload the filament. And that's exactly what it did. That's exactly what it does. <laughs> okay. So yeah, there's problems with this as well. The logic is completely flawed. It's like, yeah, I'll remember everything. Oh, I screwed up loading the filament. Um, but I'll remember that the filament's loaded. So they'll have to redo everything. And then when they go to start the print. So again, P2. And, and why? Because it didn't push the filament down the thing. It only pushed it a little bit.
What is it because it's stopping it here? Oh, 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 okay. That's why. The reason it can't load the filament is because the enraged rabbit carrot farm or carrot patch, I call it a farm because there's a bunch of patches, is, is garbage, basic garbage. And as soon as it gets to that point, it can't pull anymore. So is that a problem? Is that a problem? I don't know if that's a problem. I don't know if that's a problem. But that's what's happening. For three, five, two, 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 three. So we'll try a three on here. There was a two. Um, my assumption, of course, is it's not going to make a difference. What's going to make the difference is that I pre pulled a whole bunch into the buffer. And yeah, it's, you know, it's all these tight turns around all these, these corners and everything like that. It just, it just does not have the power to pull filament out of, uh, um, it doesn't have the power to pull filament off the roll. The extruder does, but that's not enough. The ERCF does not have the power to pull filament off the spool. Hey, Duff. How's it going? Okay, so what do we want? P P2. Oh my God, you're such a piece of garbage. You just literally load, unloaded the filament out of the machine of T0. Like that's what it did. It just unloaded the filament of T0 out of the machine. First step. Let's ruin any chance of printing. That's where we'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll start. Let's destroy any chance of continu continuous printing. Let's unload whatever is going on right now. So, like, there's no, like, like what I want here is a button that I can go click and it goes, boom, I'm in a fresh state. But there doesn't seem to be anything, any such thing. Yeah, see though, we're we're spo we're running the Happy Hair software now, and it's still it's making assumptions. It makes way too many assumptions about what's going on. It's like, oh, I screwed up loading the filament. I can't get it to the extruder. Okay, well the next time I press T two, oh, the filament's in the extruder. Let me back that out for you, and all it does is back the filament out of the machine so you can't use it anymore. So the, there's a problem with resetting persistence. What does ERCF recover? Yeah, see, see, this is it. This is the problem. This is the exact problem. Recover basically tells me that right now the filament should be right about here, but it's not. It's not. So, 
how am I, how am I supposed to work with this? I just don't understand. It's making super bad assumptions. It's basically making the assumption that if something goes wrong, you haven't intervened. That's, that's the assumption it's making. Something's gone wrong. You've done nothing about it. I'm going to assume that the fact that I failed to load the filament in and figured that out before it happened, happened anyway. That's what it's doing. It's making the assumption that everything worked. It's making the assumption that it is working. And it's obviously not. It's literally got the servo down right now. And the other problem I have is, is they've gone as far as, let's see, ERCF home. So it's doing the home. So now, now it has to be in a state. Hey, Megan, Nico. It has to be in a state right now where it knows there's no filament anywhere, right? It, it has to be in a state where it's like, yep, yeah, everything's ready to go. And as soon as you want me to print something, I'm just ready to go. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for you to press the button. So it shouldn't be making any assumptions that something is loaded right now. So I should be able to just go in here and go T1 and it should just load to a one. But no, it's not. It's, it's actually trying to unload filament from the freaking extruder. It's not doing anything. How, why? Okay, I'm really tired of this. This has an encoder. It has a bloody encoder. It knows it's not moving anything. It immediately knows it's not moving anything, but yet it moves it anyway. Shows that it's moved it. According to it, Based on the encoder, and I, I know you can't see it on the screen right now. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Here we go. This is the information it has right now. This is the information it has. Right now, the filament is past the encoder, past the extruder, and almost at the nozzle. But meanwhile, it hasn't got it out of the frickin' machine. <laughs> ah! <coughs> I just don't get it. I really don't. There, there, the, the persistence I don't understand why it's a good thing. I can literally restart the machine and it would go, oh, I have to back the filament out of the machine and back the filament out of the dock so that you can't load it. That's what it would do. So it's persistence, it's level of persistence is too high, way too high. Now, I don't know if I can change that. I may be able to change. Let me see. Parameters, okay.
my god. <laughs> While it's offline, it can come back to life exactly where you left it off. No, it can't. It can't. It can't even tell where the filament is. So, so how is it supposed to do this? It, it literally can't get the filament out of the block into the into the thing and it just sits there spins the motor nothing happens <laughs> I could try it. Uh... yeah I've heard chameleons uh doesn't work well with clipper though but I I I, I don't know So if I, but the problem of course right now is it's gone and said, oh, I don't care. The, the, I don't care, the, the things uh, never mind, I'm just babbling. Um, so, okay. Let's unload number two. And what's it on? It's on nothing. So in number three, or number two, really, that up to the gate. Push that up to the gate. Now, of course, the problem here is this, because as soon as I go home, I'm gonna go home. So right now, dual gate mapping, selected on T0. And it says there's nothing loaded. T0. No problem, loads T0. So T0 is, no, no, T0 is not loaded. It got it down to the thing, and then, I don't know. Who knows? Who the hell knows? All I know is for some reason it thinks there's a damn sensor again. Excess slippage was detected in the Bowden tube, but apply Bowden correction is disabled. Well, let's change that. Sorry, I'm getting uh, a little frustrated with this right now because um, the, the I just I'm finding some of the logic, the assumptions, not the logic. The logic's basically good. But the assumptions it's making are basically bad. Um, ERCF status, where it is. So right now, nothing. Nothing now. But of course it can't home because filament's loaded. But 
Putin couldn't possibly know that, could it? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to shut up now. Okay, so we're good again. We got everything in place. I'm going to do a home. Tool zero enable. Tool zero. See, it's looking for a damn sensor again. It's going to fail because it's not going to find the sensor. Yeah, yeah. Failed to reach tool head sensor. There is no tool head sensor. It re-enabled the tool head sensor when I restarted the machine. So it's got no respect. That's basically the problem here. No respect. Persistence. <laughs> Persistence is the bane of my existence. It always is. Write a web page. Well, it's non-persistent. It doesn't persist. It needs Rebuild your state all the time. Not, not these days, but problem. Okay, so where are we now? My guess would be there's filament in here. Because of course there is. So there, I, uh, um, there is a filament sensor, but I can't turn it on because of course as soon as I allow the machine to know of its existence it just uses it so I can't use a filament sensor for my own viewing pleasure <laughs> select it on gate zero go Tool zero. You got it, tool zero. You're a tool. Tool one. Also, back to extruder. Nothing. Nothing is doing anything. Because the damn servo's not down. How the hell do you expect anything to happen if the servo's not down? My God. Ah! This is completely infuriating. There is literally no freaking way in the world this thing is ever going to work. Ever. I might as well take it off this machine, smash it into a thousand pieces. And it might be better off that way. At least then I would have a thousand pieces. Now I just have pure frustration and 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 enragement. <laughs> enragement. Because like literally, you didn't load it because you, the servo didn't go down. It's like the ser. How do you fix that? You can't fix that. That's just bad design. The server is bouncing up on a one hat. The one hat is the thinnest hat you can put on a, on a, on a thing. So it can't get thinner. But yet the server goes down and shoot, gets pushed back up.
and then your filament just doesn't load that time. And you need to enrage. I mean, I mean, fix it. So how do you, how do you deal with that? And I think how you deal with that is you, 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 you give up and you go on with your life and find better things to spend your time on. Is what you should do. <laughs> ah. So the problem, of course, now is what? Status. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the filament's in the extruder right now. It's right by the nozzle. Filament's right by the nozzle right now. I know, I pushed it there on T1. But of course, it's not. It, 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 not anyway. So... Unlock. It's not locked. Well, of course it's not. Um, recover. Status. Home. I, I ideally with this all the uh, I guess experience I've had so far what my aim would be for is like a, uh, a much more powerful MMU that MMU is a good machine it's solid it doesn't need no stupid filament sensor when it goes to push filament filament move there's no you got the wrong hat on the servo pops up. None of those are, th that's not a thing. It's so simple that it's, that it works. This thing is so overly complex, complex, that it, 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 that's, that is, that's its main fail. It is way over, over complex. I still don't know if I'm loading T1 is going to work. I have, I have no idea. I have no idea why it wouldn't work other than maybe it has to pull, you know, tight filament from there. I don't know. I don't know why the, the thing wouldn't stay down. You know what I mean? See what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, right now, that filament is at the extruder. That's literally what it says. It literally says the, the filament right now is between the extruder and the nozzle. But yet, the encoder did not move. So no, we've got to, we've got to, like, there's no joy in, in, in Rabbitville, <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore, because this is truly ridiculous. And yeah, if I ask it the status, it says, yep, yeah. yep, yeah. we've loaded the filament. I wish I could, yeah. Yeah, it basically says, yeah, the filament is down here. We saw it go down there. We did it ourselves. And yet it failed because the, the encoder didn't move. But yet the state is all screwed up and wrong. How can I share this screen? Can you hear me still?
So here it is. Right here. And that's that's exactly what it did. Is it is it detected slippage, but yet it's still showing up between the extruder and the nozzle. It did this, whatever that is. And then it said, oh, okay, it's at the extruder. And it wrote it from the extruder to the nozzle. And then it failed. But meanwhile, what had actually happened was nothing. Nothing at all. It literally rolled the filament up to here and stopped. Didn't roll over the encoder. Somehow thought, yeah, I've, I've pushed 700 meter, millimeters of filament. I'm good. We're at the extruder. Let's keep going. Oh, we're past that. Oh, we're at the nozzle. Oh, something went wrong. Well, what the hell went wrong? How, how would you know? You have no idea. You're, you're actually checking to see if the extruder motor is pushing the encoder. And that's why you're failing it. But yet your motor wasn't pushing the encoder. And that's where it should have failed immediately. But that's not what happened. It, 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 it literally says here that it pushed 436.3. Oh no, that's an unload. Moved 500 millimeters. There is slippage. Like none of this makes any sense. That none of that is true. Those things did not happen. Okay, so recover. And it still thinks the frickin' filament is down there. There's no reset. There is no reset. Or maybe there is a reset. So everything is back up. An extruder array. And then just, you just need uh, Y joints. You can have like six of them and then you just have a two feeding into one. So then you end up with three. And you have two of those feeding into one, and then one of those feeding into that other one, and then you've got your single line. Yeah. And then it's dumb too, which is really, really, really a good thing, what I've seen. The dumber your, your MMU, the better. Yeah, I have to say using the MMU, the MMU2 on the, on, you know, working through that gave me 
better idea of what's going on. But like I said with this, like, you're fighting a different fight here. You're not really fighting the same fight. This is something completely different. And, you know, maybe Okay, T1. Unloaded. I don't know what it's doing now. And no, it's not doing anything. This time it did. But again, as you can tell, it's not freaking loading filament. But yet on the screen, it's showing that it's loading filament. There's no encoder movement at all. Warning, excess slippage. Moved 523.2. Encoder delta. Encoder delta, the difference between what we moved and what we did, actually did, was 523.2. We're at the extruder. No, you're not. You had slippage the entire way. You're not anywhere. You didn't do frick all. The servo popped up and you didn't do anything. You piece of crap. Yeah, it's unloading it from here. Servo's down. And now it's completely rolled the filament out of the machine so that it's unusable. Because that's what it does. That's how it rolls. So this isn't because it can't pull it. It's because the servo just keeps on bouncing up. So what, one is too thick? What, like, I don't understand. This is as thin as they get. This is the last one you can use. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, 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 well, as you can probably tell, I'm getting pretty tired of this. Um, what am I doing? What am I doing? I don't think there is a solution. I really wish there was a site uh, where you could, like, um, you know, like register your working ERC app so we could actually go there and see how many serial numbers you sent out. And you have to do like a full color, full color print for the deal. Not just, uh, not like what I did. About three colors. Okay. Let's see. Great rabbit crap fest. I mean, parrot feeder. Loaded. What are we going to go with? 
go with a different two maybe maybe a different one maybe a five here's another one but again why why one one is not even holding the filament down there's no point even trying here's a three Okay, um, what is our, our, our state? What does our status say? It says that everything is fine. Everything is glorious. Need one. Unknown filament position. Are you kidding me? What does that mean? You piece of crap. It didn't do anything. Again, it didn't. It is not doing anything. It's not doing anything. It says it's hit the encoder. The encoder hasn't moved. The slippage, the amount, the difference between the what the encoder read and what it was supposed to move is well, what it was supposed to move. So the code encoder sensed nothing again, and yet it's like, oh, I'm at the extruder. No, no, it's even worse. It's almost at the nozzle. But of course, there's no filament even here. Like this thing is such a piece of shit when it comes to, it's, it's both, it's both. I'm done, I am done. I think the enraged rabbit carry feeder is over. I'm done. I'm literally done with this. This is just bad design and obviously bad logic in the software as well. I'm sorry guys, or you know, who, who designed this, but it's not ready. Like it's not ready for anybody to use. The, the fact that it thinks it's at the nozzle and yet has a delta that is exactly the same as the distance it moved. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> Now, what I wonder, what I wonder is, can I see any of this? Is any of this accessible? Is any of this like something I can dig into and go, well, no, the, the, uh, you can't do that. Like, So software. So the software is pretty uh, minimal. So yeah, we, we're not going to be doing anything in here. Macros, uh, client macros, ERCF macros. It's not macro big, would be my guess. Okay, did I see a note on encoder problems here? Notes on encoder problems. Yeah, well, obviously we don't have an encoder problem. We know that. Our problem here is the fact that one, the machine has no freaking clue what's going on. You you tell it, it tells itself that nothing's moved and then it assumes that it's already to the, the uh, to the uh, nozzle. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. Um, yeah, you can take a marker and, and mark up big sandpaper. It's shiny. I found just finding a better uh, quality uh, thing better. But 
clipper screen. So we can look at this. But obviously, there's going to be a lot of digging through. Like, there's literally thousands of lines of code um, in order to figure out how it all works. Um, if I search for T0, That's probably in a macro, right? So T1 calls ERCF tool chain. Here we go. Here's the code. I. Yeah, I'm not. Cool. Yeah, I think this is a little too deep for me. I don't want to go this deep. I'm not interested. I'm just, I'm just done. I am done. ERCF is over. Cancelled. There's just no other point. There's no point in continuing this. It's just pure frustration. Um, the software is buggy, illogical, basically doesn't. Um, the hardware is flaky. Um, well, sorry, like 99% of the hardware works. Works fine. What's flaky with the hardware is that damn servo, the bounce back of the servo. Like, it makes the machine undo um, so until there's a, a a different option it's no there's no point fighting with it. never gets you any um, so I'm gonna pack up all this crap I'm gonna put all my stuff back to where it belongs I'm gonna restore my um, switch wire my under switch wire to it usable state we'll get the uh, filament holder back on here and I'm going to throw this in a box leave it there and then I'll be happy then I'll be a happy hair um, because yeah there's no point um, maybe I'll do some more work on the MMU trying to get the ABS and, and stuff like that going you know because five color or four color five color abs wouldn't be bad nine colors sort of ridiculous maybe yes um but yeah i think uh, i'm gonna refocus my my uh efforts 
back on Trihydra uh, tri deck, because again, here we'll have multi-color printing, multi-tool head. Well, two tool heads. Um, before I finally uh, probably try to build something with a head switcher. I think that's okay. Um, this might be the frame it ends up on. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. Goodbye, ERCF. You have not, you were not worth the time. You know, you have only hours. Like, this has literally been hundreds of hours still to and try to get. And the biggest problem is the servo. The server balance makes it impossible. Um, servo balance is just. Like, to me, it's like the servo's in the wrong damn place. If the servo was up forward, it could wedge, but it can't wedge. It's pu it, it's it's pushed on a hill, so it, it, its tendency is to go down. But whatever. Um, I'm just babbling at this point. I want to thank everybody who came today. Um, it was a, you know, I'm not going to say it was a bad stream. I'm just going to say the end result is not where we wanted to go. Um, but yet... Was somewhat expected. I didn't think I would spend three hours and 45 minutes and not get any further than this. But obviously, there's no there's no point fighting with it. It's very insistent that it's doing things that it's not, and you can't you can't work around that without changing the software. I might, I might, you know, sit down. I'm going to go make a pizza, actually, when I'm done this. Uh, and uh, I might sit down while I'm eating my pizza and just browse through that software. Um, there's got to be an answer. Um, but it's... It's a combination of changing the way this works. So, thanks everybody for coming. Thanks for the donation, Scotty. That's awesome. Or I'm going to have to make a plaque with everybody's name on it. Um, put on Trihydrodex when I get it built. Print it two colors. It'll go right on there. It'll be great. Um, and, uh, yeah. New focus. Thanks for coming, everybody. See you next. If I can figure out how to do this. Why can't I do this? I got it. I got it. Don't worry about me. I'm okay.